Okay, today we're going to talk about um, a topic that some may find ex exciting, some may find daunting, or some may find very challenging. And we're talking about development or developing your spiritual gifts. And although the context again has to do with spiritual gifts, this could, the principles we learn on this could, could apply not just the spiritual gifts, but even the natural giftings, your skills, your abilities, your talents, and all of those things. So you could be responsible for applying all those to different contexts. So we're talking about developing our spiritual gifts, and we're now on part two, with the emphasis on knowing your why. Knowing your why. Why do we have to develop our gift? Your answer here will determine how passionate you are, how zealous you are, or how not passionate you are, or not zealous you are about your pursuit of your spiritual gifts. If your why, if our why is valuable or important, we will pursue the development of our gifts, like you're the you're one of the three monkeys that, that are running towards the Ark of Noah. You get that one? Get that one? Remember, you're only allowed to have two, two a, a pair in the ark. If you're the third monkey, you're going to run towards it as fast as you can, right? right? So if you know the value of your gifts, you're going to run to the development of it like that monkey there. So if your why is not so valuable, you're probably one of those people in the time of Noah who's been preached to for almost like 120 years by Noah to get into the ark, and they did not do anything about it. You don't want to be that person. Okay, so today, we're going to see how important our whys are. Why God is asking us to develop our skills and our gifts as well. So first, we're going to review. Last week, we talked about the first point, which is what? Do not neglect them. If you have your gift, God has given you a gift, whether it's a skill, ability, a spiritual gift, whether it's an object, your, your, your mind, your heart, your, or people, your spouse, your, um, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, um, your children, whatever it may be. As I said, it applies to every one of them. The first point we have is to not neglect them. And under that, we know that we said, we stated that neglect could be the worst thing or one of the worst things that anybody could do when it comes to their gifts. And under that, we talked about how to not neglect them, which is one, keep on using them, and then under that, learning more, or keep on learning more about them. So today is a continuation of our message. So the verse we're going to read to you is 2 Timothy 1.6. First one. From the New International Version, this is what it says. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you, through the laying on of my hands. Look at that word, fan to flame. Fan to flame is an expression that could apply or refer to making something bigger, developing it, making it more productive, growing it. So Paul was reminding Timothy to grow and develop his God-given gift. But he started, the, the one thing that I'd like you to notice is how he started, for this reason. For this reason. So when we say, for this reason, that talks about what I said a while ago, is our topic today, knowing your why. What's your reason? What was Paul's reason that he was giving to Timothy? Why he had to develop his gift. Praise God, because prior, prior, the prior verse, before the verse that we read, verse 6, in verse 5, it actually speaks about Paul's reason. It may not be as easy to understand, the reason why he gave this, and then segued into encouraging Timothy to develop his gift. But this is the reason that he has. He says in verse 5, I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your mother or grandmother Lois. Lois? Lois? How do you say it? Lois? Lois. Lois. And in your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded now lives in you also. So if you look at this, it's basically Paul telling Timothy that he's, he noticed that sincere faith that he had was also present 
in the grandma and, and the mom. So I tried to like read another version, which is the Amplified Bible. And this is what it says. And I was trying to figure out what was Paul's point. Why did he connect this to now that you have this, then I want you to develop or fan into flame your faith. We like to go to the Bible. Okay? We always have to go to the Bible for the explanation of what they're talking about. Okay, So verse 5 in Amplified says, I remember your sincere and unqualified faith. The surrendering of your entire self to God in Christ with confident trust in His power, wisdom, and goodness. A faith which first lived in the heart of your grandmother, Loy, and your mother, Eunice. And I am confident that it is in you as well. Okay, so look at this. If you look at that translation, now you see un sincere and unqualified faith. So when you look at that, I want you to make the connection. Does, does that connect with development of gift? Okay? Sincere and unqualified faith. Self-surrender. Confident trust in God's power. Wisdom. Goodness. Somehow, Paul was telling Timothy, in your, your practice or non-practice, in your passion and zeal and the pursuit of the development of your spiritual gift or the lack of it, you're going to affect all of these things. Okay, we could go on and on regarding this and how the connections happen, but just to, that's not the main topic that we have, but I'm just making that point. There is a reason. He's giving Timothy the why. And that's a topic that we have this morning. All of these, by the way, will be affected by whether he develops them, the gifts or not. Okay? So our spiritual gifts have much to do with these things. So that also already, right away, when you talk about faith, is that important? Yes. Sincerity of faith, is that important? Self-surrender, is that imp important? Yes. Confidence in God, is that important? Yes. God's power, is that important? Yes. God's wisdom, is that important? Yes. God's goodness, is that important? Yes. If all of those are important, that's a big, valuable why right there in front of Timothy. Mm. Okay, so we apply that to us now. And the first thing I'd like to show to you of how or what why is for a believer like us is this. No, it's, it's the first point, letter, letter A. Okay, what is our why? What is the first why? We get to serve and honor God more. We get to serve and honor God more. And we're, not just, we're not just serving a successful human being or a non-successful human being in, in, in the planet. We're not serving the devil. We're not serving somebody who desires something wrong about us. We're not serving somebody who we don't like. We're, we're not serving somebody who doesn't even care about us. We're serving some, uh, someone who has the song we sang a while ago, is the greatest being there ever is on earth. Is that worth developing? The question is, is that worth developing our gifts for? Does God deserve the best? And the answer to that, that's a, that's a rhetorical question. God deserves the best from us. That's the reason why he deserves... And He deserves the best because He is the best. Amen? Amen. He is the best. And not only is He the best, but far removed from us. He is the best, but He cares for you and me. And He wants the best for you and me. And He's given us the best, Jesus. Amen. And He's giving us the best day after day. Yeah. Amen. So He deserves the best from me. I am not going to serve. You and I are not going to serve Him with mediocre service. You and I are not going to serve Him with the mediocre worshiping, with mediocre worship. We're going to give Him everything that we could give. Amen. We are going to worship Him with everything we've got. Right. We're going to serve Him with everything we've got. We're going to love Him with everything we've got. Amen. 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 Because He deserves all of those. That's right. That's right. There's a reason why Matthew twenty two thirty seven says, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with what? With oh. one half of your love. Oh. With three-fourths of. No. It says, love the Lord your God with all. Oh. Amen. You know what? You go to the Greek, you go to the Hebrew, and look at the word all. And you'll find out that the meaning of all is all. <laughs> love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. It's loving it with everything we've got. And that includes our gift things. Okay, so we've got to serve Him, love Him, worship Him with all that we can. Our utmost for His highest. That's right. For 
Amen? Amen. Okay, so the second thing, we've got to serve. So we're not the why. The first why is because we get to serve God and honor God more. And by the way, for a believer, a true believer will find that as their highest glory. I really love that song, Oh Lord, You're Beautiful. How many of you know that song? Your face is all I seek. And when your eyes are on this child, your grace abounds in me. Amen. And the chorus goes, I want to, I want to, something like, tell the world, I want to. It's almost like, I want to, blank, 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 and shout it all around. But first, let me just live your word. And if I'm doing well, listen to this, if I'm doing well, help me to never seek a crowd. For my, for my reward, or help me to never seek a crown or a crown, either way, it, it applies, right? Help me to never seek a crown or a crown, for my reward, listen to this, is giving glory to you. Amen. My reward is giving glory to you. And I think that's a high priority in the heart of a believer, a true believer. Yes. Okay, the second why, is, I mean, that alone, that alone is enough, right? Mm -hmm. But here's the second why. The second why is this, we get to serve others better. You've got to serve our brothers and sisters better. Do you want to serve your brother or sister more? Yes. yes. Right? Last week we talked about sometimes our brothers and sisters, when you get into the room, we sing hallelujah, praise God, we sing beautiful songs, and we feel or we think or we assume that everybody's doing good and fine. Because we see smiles in their faces. But behind the masks and behind those smiles, honestly, and I know so many situations, in so many of our people in the church, that behind the smiles of a lot of people, they come together and gather together. And that's very encouraging, by the way. Gathering together is an encouraging thing, especially when you're depressed. You do something that is different from what you feel inside. Depression wants you to withdraw. But the right thing to do is to go out there. So we gather together as God's people. We actually feel the joy of God. And in a corporate setting, it's like you're a coal in a greater like number of coals, greater fire, so you, you, get, you tend to get heated up, right? Like you, you, you fan into flame, that joy. But in, in, in your day-to-day -day activities, in day-to-day -day situation, there's, there are a lot of things that you cry about. You wet, with, you, you wet your pillows with tears and your heart, your heart actually shed tears. Yeah, and this, it's a figure of speech, okay? But you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. There's a reason why it's very important. It's a high priority. It's a high value that we serve our brothers and sisters better. Mm -hmm. And that's something that is a big why. That's why we got to do that. Let me read to you 1 Peter 4.10, where it says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to, see, to, to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in His various forms. Use... Whatever gift you have received to serve others. And I believe that we can serve others more if we grow and develop our giftings as well. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Take 1 Corinthians 14, 12. This is what it says. So it is with you, he says, since you, e you are eager for gifts of the Spirit, try to excel those that build up the church. Excel. Go more, grow more. It's not just having some, it's not just having more, but having much. In fact, our God's name, one of God's name is what? El Shaddai. Right? Descriptions at least. One of the descriptive names of God is El Shaddai. What does El Shaddai mean? God Almighty. But it actually has another meaning in rendition as well. What is that? God who is more than yeah. enough. And that's what we are pursuing, like to be, we can actually give our best, excel, excellence in our service of our brothers and sisters. Mm. Yeah, I want to serve you more. I want to serve you better. That should be not, not just in the pastor's heart, but that should be in the heart of every believer. Amen? Mm. Amen. Okay? So, and, and, well, I'm serving already, pastor, but you know what? Do you realize that when you grow a gift, what happens? So when you have a gift that has a potential of, of let's say, level 10, and I, I like using this, although we don't want to rank people and rank our giftings and all of that, but let me just use this for illustration. 
Let's say, for example, right now, your development of gift is level three. Right? Level three. But we have brothers and sisters in Christ and people that we, that we know who are living in level 10 problems. Or level seven, level eight. Right? So when we, when we are level three in our development of our gifts, let's say, for example, encouragement, then we're able to serve people who are level three, two, one. Well, what happens when you actually elevate that level because you develop your giftings, your spiritual gifts, you develop it, that you give, now you become level six or seven. Now you're able to encompass and embrace brothers and sisters and help and advise and counsel brothers and sisters who are level four, level five, level six, and level seven as well. That totally expands your reach and your spheres of influence when it comes to the number of people and the kinds of people that you're able to actually minister to. You're able to help a lot more people. Isn't that gratifying? Is that, isn't that something that's satisfying our hearts? Right? When we're able to actually grow in our development and help more people. Okay? So, in the world, we know that they use their talents. Actually, no. They use your talents for themselves, but, but more than that, in the world, they use people. In the world, they use people, they misuse people, they abuse people in order to serve themselves, in order to go up that corporate ladder or stepping on, 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 on other people's toes so that they could just go up that, that corporate ladder of success. But we as God's people are very different from what the world does, amen? We are different from the world. We are not here to use and abuse people. We are here to serve people. We are here to help people. We are here to lead others to their dreams. We are not just building our dreams. We are actually trying to help others build their dreams as well. So, if the Lord prompts us to speak words of encouragement, what do we do? Speak the words of encouragement. If the Lord prompts you to say something to that. Do you know how we do here every like every Sunday? We have people here in front, and I'm encouraging people, even in your seats, that if you have something to say to the church, to say it. What you sense inside of your heart, the pounding in your heart, or like the thought or the word, may not be coming from you. It may be coming from God. Mm. As daunting as it could be, as scary as it could be, as shy as you may be, if God gives you a word of encouragement, let it out, speak it out. Because there may be somebody in the congregation or more your brothers and sisters who may be helped just with a single word that you're going to speak from God. Mm. Do it. Do it. Serve your brother. Serve your sister. It doesn't matter how shy or intimidated you may be or how scary it may be. If God calls us to develop our gift of teaching, then teach. Mm. You're being trained. It's Wednesdays. We agree. And praise God because you're trying to help me. We're encouraging people to actually teach, even those who, did, who don't think they don't have gift of teaching, even those who are busy. And I am blessed when people are, and, and I am blessed that people are so willing to take that plunge. Mm. Why? Because God's stretching us. God's stretching us. We've got to be willing to have that stretching. Mm. When God's stretching us, then we've got to be willing to actually do this because we want to serve our brothers and sisters more. Okay? So I believe that's, that alone, again, the first one was more than enough reason to develop our gifts. I believe the second reason is also way more than enough reason for us to develop our gifts. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay, now the third one. The third one is this. Not only are we able to serve God more, not only are we able to serve each other better, each other better, but we get to serve ourselves better also. We get to serve ourselves better also. By the way, let me just be quick to say this. It's not sinful to desire to improve yourself. Amen. It's not sinful to desire to look beautiful, to look good, to be healthy, to be strong. It's not sinful for that. Okay? God, God, it's not sinful to grow, to become a bigger person. Remember, God's Word tells us to grow. So, And by the way, growing or building yourself up is one of the purposes, there you go, it's one of the purposes of spiritual gifts. Glorify God, serve others, and then develop yourself and grow yourself. That's one of the purposes. 
And so in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4, this is what it says. Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies, him, edifies themselves. He continues by saying, but the one who prophesies edifies the church, that's serving the church. But the first part talks about edifying yourself. What does edifying ourselves mean? Edify. Look at the word edify, very close to the word edifice. Okay, a building. So it's about building yourself, ourselves up. Okay, so speaking in tongue is by the way a gift. One of the gifts that we have talked about. So it says here, edifies themselves. So we're talking about self-edification. Let me be clear, we're talking about self-edification or self. It's, we're not talking about self-glorification. We're not talking about self-exaltation. That's not our attitude in the church. We're not trying to become prima donnas or superstars or megastars or people in the spotlight. That's not what our gifts purposes are. But we're developing our gifts so that we could grow as a person, become bigger, and reach or, 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 or walk or, or run a journey towards that potential. We probably will not reach the potential that God has made for us. But at least we're going closer and closer to this. Okay, that is our aim. That is our goal. And that's a beautiful why when it comes to developing our gifts as well. Okay? We become stronger. We become better. And we become uh, deeper. And a lot more. Okay? So that's the better we are, the more people we lead to God. Yes. That's right. Is that enough reason again to grow ourselves? The better we are, the more people will lead to God. Because the better we are, that means to say we're becoming more and more. We are becoming more and more like Christ. Mm. And the more we, the more the world sees us becoming more and more like Jesus in our attitudes and our character and the way we talk, in the way we treat them, the more the world sees that, sees that they see the fruit of the Holy Spirit or the work of God in our lives. They see the light of God in us. Then what they see, what they what they do is glorify. The Bible says, "Glorify our Father who is in heaven." Amen. That means to say they're attracted to God. That's the reason why, and they start acknowledging God through our lives. And when that happens, they become attracted to God. That that could very much lead to salvation in their souls. Amen. Amen. So we become better, and then we become stronger people. So the the trials may come our way. Difficulties may come our way. Hardships may come our way. We may be battered by all of these negative things going on in situations in life. But because we're expanding and growing ourselves, we're not easily toppled. Mm. We stand in the midst of the storm. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't get crushed. That's what the song says. We're pressed. And then the Bible says. We're pressed but not crushed. We're persecuted but we're not Abandoned. We're struck down, but we're not destroyed. Amen. That's a beautiful, beautiful why when it comes to developing our gifts. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the bigger we become, if we become bigger, we we become big, we have, we have a bigger capacity to receive what God wants to invest and place in us. God could deposit more in us when we become bigger as people. Amen? I'm not talking about size. Mm. I'm talking about the capacity to receive God's blessing. Mm. And that's very important because honestly speaking, if, you, if God forces His blessing on us or in us, when we are not enough, when we don't have enough capacity for that blessing, we're going to explode. Mm. Do you know that a lot of people actually have their lives destroyed because of blessings? There are more people, I don't want to say more people, there have been a lot of accounts of people who win the lottery. I'm not encouraging you to buy lottery tickets. <laughs> but there have been stories and histories of people who have won millions of dollars and they receive that either monthly chunks, monthly chunks or, or outright, like the, the, the exact amount of what they won and their lives were destroyed. They end up, after they lost all those money, they end up worse than they were from the beginning. Why? Because they were not grown. They were not able to handle the capacity of what they received because their capacity was small. Listen to this. See, that's the reason why I said, the more you grow yourself, the more you, the more you grow your gift, the more potential and opportunity you have. Proverbs 18.16 says this from the Christian Standard Bible. A person's gift 
opens doors for him. Isn't that cool? A person's gift opens doors for him and brings him before the great. Because God's not going to embarrass himself. He's not going to send you before the presence of the great when you know, when he knows you've got nothing to give. We've got nothing to show. But the more we grow our giftings and develop our giftings, again, it applies to natural. So that, like, I, have a, I have a favorite band. I'm not going to tell you who. I had a favorite band. They have disbanded a long time ago. Right? And now they actually, when one or two of them are dead, One of them is still going, doing concerts. Beatles. And then I saw that like, like, nah, he has a team here. Like his, I think the team that he has right now is, he's been with that team longer than he's been in the band that I liked. <laughs> they've, they've lived together. But when I was looking at, man, there's, they're interesting. They're good, like lead guitarist, rhythm guitarist. And then we got this like, drummer who really gives it all he's got. Then when he plays the drums. And then I, I saw the name. And I saw the name, which is exactly the same as a praise and worship instrumentalist that I know. And I found out, and I found out that he was the son of, son, the son of the bass guitarist of this certain praise and worship group. Now he's playing with that world famous rock musician. What did he do? He developed the gift to the point that he would be chosen as a drummer for this very famous singer, composer. Are you here with me? Mm -hmm. And they've traveled all over the world. He's traveled all over the world because of that gift that he developed. And he is, he is really, really a great drummer. Okay. So then developing our gift, that opens doors for us. It pleases us and gives us an audience among the great. That's enough. Okay, so God, serving God more. How many of you want to serve God more? Yes. How many of you believe that God deserves a lot more than what we're giving Him? Yes. And for that reason, for that reason alone, I will keep on working on my gift, right? We're going to keep on pushing and pushing and working and trying and rehearsing and practicing mm -hmm. because God deserves our best. Amen. Yes. Amen. And because there are brothers and sisters of ours who we could serve better so that instead of them living broken lives, you could be there for them and help mend their lives because somehow God has given us this gift and we have developed that gift to the point that we could be more effective or efficient in serving our brothers and sisters and of course us. God doesn't want us to live wasted lives. God doesn't want us to live wasted lives. God doesn't want us to live stagnated lives. God doesn't want us to live neglected lives. God doesn't want us to live mediocre lives. Yeah. That's the reason why you're still breathing. Mm. Your breath, your life, your existence, to this point, is a, is a testimony that God is not finished with you yet. Yes. And I don't want you to put, God doesn't want us to put a period where He has put a comma mm. or a semicolon. He doesn't want you to close the book when the chapters are not read yet, or not written yet. Are you here? Mm. Chapters are still being written for your life. This is not it. This is not it. I want you to say to yourself, this is not it, Lord. Say it. This is not yet. This, this is, not is not it. it. Not this is not it. it. You got to convince yourself of that. There is more to come. Why would I have a successful pastor? That's not it yet. Mm. And I'm a very good, but I'm a very good saxophonist pastor already. That's not it yet. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very good singer. That's not it yet. I'm a very good wife. The husband says, that's not it yet. <laughs> There's more to give. Amen. Amen. We've got more to give. And we're going to give it, right? For the glory of God. Amen. And for the building up of ourselves and our brothers and sisters. Amen. So what we're going to do now is this. I'm going to lead again in prayer for those of you who are watching us. And you see the beauty of the truths that you heard today. And in your heart, you find it. Not everybody finds it in their heart to glorify God. No, a lot of people hate God. 
But somehow through the prompting of the Holy Spirit, you sense that conviction inside of you. I'm looking here because this is where the camera is. Okay. <laughs> you find a conviction in you that you want this God, this greatest being who cares for you so much and loves you so much and gave you the best and still keeps on giving you the best. And you want to have this saving, loving relationship with Him. It's very important. You may have a knowledge about Him. You may have a certain degree of relationship with Him, quote unquote. But it would not be a saving relationship. That's what He wants you to have. Everything else follows after that. Where everything else is involved in that. Okay, so if you're not yet sure if you have the saving relationship with Him and you want to have one, okay, I want you to pray this prayer. From, your, from the bottom of your heart, pray this prayer. Okay? Everybody just go ahead and close your eyes, bow your hands. For those of you who have done this before and you are sure that if I ask you today, when did you get saved? And you have an answer to that. And you know that you know that you know that your answer is right and biblical. And I want you to follow me in the Spirit to support those doing this the way you did. But if you're not sure about your answer, then I want you to pray the Spirit for yourself. Pray the Spirit for yourself. Just go ahead. And this is the position of you. I'm going to pray a short prayer. Do you a short prayer? But let it be sure. Or be sure to yourself that your desire is to receive that beautiful gift that God has given you. With a capital G. That beautiful gift is Jesus Christ. When it comes with Him as Saviorhood, you're receiving Him as your Savior. And you're also surrendering your life to Him as your Lord. If that's the desire of your heart, pray the Spirit with me. All together, dear God in heaven, dear God in heaven I, come before you, I come before you, admitting that I have failed you, admitting that, I have failed you that I have sinned against you, that I, sinned against you, that I walked away from you, and because of that, I've been separated from you. Lord, I open my heart to you now. I want to come back home. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me. And give me a new beginning. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for coming into my life. Thank you for a brand new start. All in Jesus' name. Amen.